with the call here for round number four as we get into standard. <laughs> You can't just drop that on us and then expect oh, us to have, God. like, composure, Maria <laughs> and Monty. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I played a lot of magic with Monty. I already knew he was a machine oh, yeah. here. So, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, We're to just be seeing honest. his completed yeah. form. I expected more teeth, honestly. More you know, teeth. But, mm. Yeah. Well, still, looks great. Only looks so absolutely much. great. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, everybody, to the constructed rounds of play here at the Pro Tour Minneapolis. We have two absolute heavy hitters, legends of the game, Luis Scott Vargas. Yeah. Seth Manfield, two Hall of Famers, two of the winningest players in terms of money won here. What, what did we, we added up? 1.3 mil between 1. them won? 1.3 million dollars has been won between these players combined. No big deal No big here. deal. You yeah. know, I'm sure they would be quite happy to add another 50,000 to it, you know. I think they'd like that. Yeah. 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 I think that'd be <laughs> pretty darn sweet indeed. Both players coming off a 3-0 in the limited portion of this. So let's jump in here. Take a look at these opening hands and get the game underway. All right, I'm really excited for this one, Ailey, because these are kind of the innovative takes mm -hmm. on these traditional Rakdos reanimator decks, which had been putting up some decent results, but teammates decided to go a little bit different directions yeah. here, and it's going to be interesting to see kind of which one is a little bit better. <laughs> We're going to see some smiles here between the two teammates as we get things underway. Reckoner Bankbuster, the first permanent on the battlefield. Ooh, that's some uh, that's some good good looking lands there. I I always love a good looking basic there on the Seth Manfield side of things. Yeah, and those are gorgeous. See the invasion of Amonkhet, which is another spicy way to access cards in the graveyard. So, gonna mill some, gonna discard some. Oh, I'm just gonna chuck a couple of attracts in the bin. No big deal. Yeah, really strong there. And we do see the opening hands. It did look like Seth mold to five, Luis down to six. So a bit of a disadvantage for Seth Manfield, but being able to uh, uh, discard the Atraxas is excellent. All right, so there is the invasion, and then being nice. able to just kill it right away. Followed up straight away with an Ahiri's Warcrafting, like uh, Moni mentioned, killing that, not needing any creatures to flip it. And now we have, oh, Atraxa. Surprise! <laughs> here it comes, and wow, here is the power of this. Being able to just immediately create this creature, not necessarily as power and toughness of a Traxa, but just the ability is really all you need. The ability of Traxa or the ability of Atali. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho. Itali, Primal Conqueror, saw these pesky Phyrexians trying to invade and basically said, you know what, I'm just going to chomp on you. But then got converted, unfortunately. So, Lazatep Convert hanging out as the Atraxa able to get some goodies there. And uh, things looking good so far here for Louis Scott Vargas. All right, so, yep, definitely huge advantage here to Luis. That, ah, oh, that Nahiri's Warcraft is so, so good. Yeah, just a way to ensure that you definitely kill that battle as it lands because you want to take advantage of your graveyard before there are any graveyard disruption effects, you know, that could be brought this week and, you know, expecting to see cards like Graveyard Trespasser, like the Corpse Appraisers, you know, if you can eliminate targets in graveyards, that's a pretty good call for this weekend. Totally agree. Totally agree. Graveyard trespasser stuff like that, but it is the the nice innovation of being able to discard like two of blood yeah. uh, at end step so that you don't get it with these sorcery spelled creatures. We've even seen a couple of players play Rotten Reunion <laughs> in the sideboard, <laughs> a card that is really not necessarily super powerful, no. but the instant speed ability to stop some of these reanimation strategies is really, really overwhelming. 24 to 16 now for our two Hall of Famers. Seth Manfield, former world champion, so you know, he's pretty much done it all. Pretty much. Both these players really have uh, you know, accomplished a lot. Luis, did, I don't believe, has the world champion uh, chip accomplishment quite yet, but uh, that's pretty hey. much the only thing missing from his resume as well. Good these time to go for it. <laughs> impressive players, and here we go, the Ooh, extremely powerful thing. It. Cruelty of Gix, straight to chapter three, courtesy of Rita Head, finding that Itali and flipping some goodies off the top of both libraries. 
Wow. Okay, so you can get Invasion into play. <laughs> Seth is going to have to discard a card. Luis is going to get to draw one. We're going to get some mm -hmm. milling. And then you can just attack Invasion as well. And, well, you can just get another Attracta Do ability. it again. This is insane. This looks incredible. Like, I think the, the general consensus for a lot of players this weekend is like, yeah, red and black, that's the best thing you can be doing. So, you know, if yeah. you can't beat them, join them. And if you do join them, make sure you can beat them. This yeah. is the way that we're doing it. Yeah, and while we while we say there is a lot of, you know, Blood Tithe Harvester fabled decks, mm -hmm. the variation is huge. Yeah. You know, there are a ton of different things. Go for the throat, taking care of the Atali and Invoke Despair. That is a way to get back into this. Unfortunately, it doesn't hit the battle, but will clear the battlefield of permanence and net Manfield a card. Yep, absolutely. We do see another Nahiri's uh, Warcraft in play, so we can just hit this uh, invasion and just start <laughs> doing Atali <laughs> or Atraxa shenanigans once again. Yeah, without exiling a graveyard, like, where's Bajookabug? Come on. Yeah, right, <laughs> We absolutely. need some of that type of effect going here for Seth Manfield, who's just, uh, you know, just wiping his brow, just taking a look at what is very much Luis Scott Vargas. He's, a, he's in the driver's seat right now. Oh, he's absolutely. Cool. He's activated Atali, activated Atraxa, just done so many things here. And here we go, dealing oh, with the invasion. And yeah, I was really excited to see how this Grixis <laughs> Reanimator deck played out because it looks really, really innovative. And that is a behold <laughs> the multiverse. Breach the multiverse. Or breach the multiverse being oh cast my here. And Seth has had enough. Oh, yeah, I would have enough of that too. You know, it, it's not a combo deck. It's not like you're watching someone just going through the motions. Da, 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 da. But that's what it feels like yeah. at the end of the day. Oh, it's yeah. just like, okay, yeah, overwhelming advantage to you. Let's go to game two. Let's talk about sideboards. What do you think we'll see here as we fire off a duress and take a look ski at the hand of Luis Scott Vargas? Yeah, definitely duress from both players is going to be really strong, just trying to break up all of these really powerful spells. Um, outside of that, nothing, you know, super important. There's another Breach, the Multiverse from Seth, another Atali if you want to continue to go bigger, as well as a Bank Buster. Mm -hmm. And then from Luis's side, <laughs> Luis kind of has the advantage here where you get to bring in Halo Forger, which is pretty good yeah. at bringing back Duress. Duress, and then there's at least one counter spell, one, or excuse me, two Disdainful Strokes. You can Cruelty a Gix for that card, yeah. too, and then counter Cess big play, <laughs> which ends up being quite strong. That's really cool indeed. So Duress aplenty from both players here as we get the Blood Tithe Harvester down on the battlefield. There's those Blood Tokens you mentioned as a way to end step, discard something into the graveyard. And not too many cards left in hand here for Seth. Yeah, Razor Lash, Trons, Margaret. Got to breach the multiverse too. There is Transmogrant and a land drop, and now Luis does have Invasion inv available. Mm -hmm. No way to deal with it straight away right now, but it is going to be a lot tougher to just deal with that card in the post-board games. There's yeah. going to be counter spells. There's going to be um, just a ton of disruption, duresses to stop all this stuff from happening. See the mill, see the discard on Seth Manfield's side. <laughs> there goes Breach once again. We'll see you later, don't worry. We'll see plenty of that this weekend if things I go well we for will. the team. Uh, I think we will, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, Breach, just such an incredibly powerful card. And the one thing that Cess deck has access to, kind of something that they've differed, Big Score being one card, but Chandra Hope's yeah. Beacon as well. Oh, she's so good. I need to see a Chandra yep. into a Breach, the multiverse. Mm -hmm. That sounds so awesome. All right, so that's the second order we're putting in. Is that dessert? That's dessert. I mean, All that's right. dessert, entree, sure. breakfast, that's everything. <laughs> All you can eat buffet. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, it's like I'll <laughs> use your deck to beat you too. That's one thing I like about the Halo Forager as well, is it can be real cheeky and steal from your opponent too. Absolutely. All right, let's see where we're going though. Yeah. Well, w would you like to pick from, from which graveyard, sir? Yep, goes with Cess Duress. <laughs> <laughs> and got another, another breach. copy. Oh no. <laughs> oh, second breach down. So Seth does have the aggression though here, so not all bad news. Gets in three more damage, putting Luis down to eight, and a big top deck there. Nice. Graveyard Ooh, Trespasser. Yeah. yeah, let's chew on some critters. Get oh. that Halo Farge out of there, start digging. Gain and drain effects going off. Trespasser was perfect. It presented lethal for next turn. If you can attack and just drain 
a creature, and it doesn't look like Luis has any way to deal with it right now. This is an invasion to try to find an answer. Yeah, dig, 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 because you're going to need some help here to survive. Disdainful stroke, three lands, that's not going to cut it. Yeah, let's see. Was there anything else picked up? Bankbuster. Bankbuster. Yeah, now it's just, does Seth see that he can exile his own creature and win the game here, which I think uh, he probably will. Oh, well, Sokin's in. Get okay. the creatures out. Don't need to do any of that fancy stuff. Just turn dude sideways. Wow, we were thinking this <laughs> standard was going to be so grindy and so, you know, maybe slowish games. Players. Not so far. Yeah, that's mm -mm. for sure. These games have been lightning fast. It doesn't matter what Luis is playing. He is always incredibly quick yes. with his decisions. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's always three steps ahead. You know, yeah. he can play the most boring control deck in the world, and he'll make it look interesting. Exactly. Still one of my favorite stories ever is him <laughs> against Shota, where oh, yeah. the judges had to tell them to <laughs> slow down. You were yeah. playing too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know that they wouldn't, but in those gentlemen's position, I would have just said, keep up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> They're just so, so good. Bankbuster and Blood Tithe Harvester down. There's Fable. I was wondering how long it would take to see one of them. No kidding. I've seen a couple in the bin. Yeah, Duress. exactly. Duress really likes that card. First Fable coming down, and Luisa's hand looking pretty good. You have that Attracts at a discard. You have mm -hmm. Cruelty lined up. Oh, so, nice. I mean, Luis has it all wrapped up to bring back an Attracts of this Next turn, turn. Yeah. unless the Shaman is dealt with. Yeah, Shaman needs to attack. You get the treasure. And then you're able to Cruelty of Gix to get that. Okay. And, uh, yeah, there's really no answer for this. So it looks like there's going to be an Atraxa on the battlefield already here on turn four. Turn four is as fast as you can do these. Yeah, no, it's pretty nutty. It does need the land, hit Sokens in. So has it all lined up. You kind of have to give away your shaman here because it will just get blocked. But oh yeah, he's not—he's not long for this world. Yeah, he's, yeah. He has a job to do. He's like, I'm going <laughs> to get you treasure. I will die, but I will find you treasure. All right, and there that's is exactly the what he's done. So here we go. This could be a very quick game three here between these two players. Tap out, crack treasure. Gix, read ahead. Number three. Let's go, Atraxa. Take a look. At. <laughs> 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 players joking around with each other. Of course, they are teammates and friends. Yeah. Oh, man. What's the most number of things you've gotten off the top of? The I library? believe it was six. Six is the most I got, but I've never played with it. Or I've never hit a battle. I d I've never oh, tried the yeah, Grixis yeah. version. So that's an additional type that you get yeah. to uh, have access to. So oh, neat. Look at that. Really impressive. It's five extra cards. Sweet. Unbelievable. Fable. Got to land there, Disdainful Stroke, Itali, and Duress. All right. <laughs> and able to finish off the Bank Buster there since it already took two damage. Yep. And Seth is in a world of trouble already. Oh, yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Unbelievable stuff here so far. This deck is getting the job done. Extremely efficiently, I will yeah, say. Absolutely, and Ooh, it looks like Seth has a Shieldred available as a decent card to help out, but Atraxa really uh, negates that uh, two, life that, two life that you're losing every time uh, you oh draw yeah. a card pretty quickly. Yeah, Atraxa is a formidable foe indeed on this battlefield, so let's see what the draw is here for Seth Manfield. What can he find to get him out of this predicament? Go for the throat. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. a good one. That's that was a, good a great one. draw. You know, next to uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker and uh, Bank Bus is probably one of the most played cards just because it deals with almost every threat Definitely. in the format. Yeah, basically forced to have uh, mm. a bunch of Go for the Throats available because of Esper Legends. You know, there's just mm. so many cards you have to deal with with the, that deck. That's kind of our go-to aggressive deck in the format. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, green. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, now we have the reflection of Kiki Jiki flipped. Not going to be doing anything this turn. Got to love our hand spotters, really keeping up with the tracks. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's definitely a, a challenge for everyone, that's for sure. Oh, shout outs to Tan and Grace and Frank Carsten doing an excellent job this weekend, bringing Absolutely. us all the information we need, as well as all the numbers, you know, metagame breakdowns. Every single time something like that happens, Frank Carsten. What can't they do? <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know if he can uh, do the tango. I haven't asked him that. But We're going to find out. We're going to have to ask him. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, it was an after party or something. Duress, let's take a look ski in the hands here. Nothing doing. Yeah, that doesn't happen often, huh? It's a pretty good feeling when it does, often. sometimes. <laughs> yeah, now you know you, there's no spells, but, you know, for Seth, doesn't really have the greatest of options. It's mm -mm. Shieldred or Bust, so now everything is really in Luis's corner. You can just hold up Disdainful Stroke, counter that if you think you can beat the Harvesters. Mm. And right now, you know, eventually these Harvesters will kind of take over, so it'll be interesting what Luis does. And if Luis had perfect information here, he would have much rather went three drop, hold up Disdainful Stroke, but really wanted to make sure there wasn't a Cruelty yeah. of Gix to bring back Atali, so... Now Luis is in kind of a weird spot. Do you hold up in case there is a top deck cruelty that would almost assuredly transform this game? Or do you just play a threat and say, I'm fine with Shieldred, I just really hope you don't get cruelty to take, well, one of those Atali or Atraxas. Those both would just be phenomenal hits. <laughs> yeah, they are definitely haymakers. They get games won very quickly if they go unchecked, so. Luis in the tank here, thinking about what he wants to do for his next play. The one thing that's pretty interesting here is Luis could play Invasion of Amonkhet okay. and force a discard of either the land or Shieldred. Yeah. Um, and that would put, be a tough choice for Seth, but Luis is just thinking, I want to play a lot more conservatively. If I hold up this disdainful stroke the whole game, mm. I'm not going to get cruelty. Yeah. And, and with, uh, it's with, a much safer play. Yeah. And with Takanuma in hand, anything that is discarded, he can get back. Yeah, exactly. So just going to hang on to the Amonkhet, leave his options open to him. And you mentioned these bank, uh, excuse me, these um, blood tithe harvesters. They're three powers. You know, you, yeah. you, you kind of just ignore them. You're like, oh, it's fine. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm now down to four or whatever the case may be. So they do definitely get the job done. And if they're able to get extra blood tokens down to any of your big threats you deploy, they can kill these. Yeah, so. they add up really quick. Yeah. Absolutely. So Fable picked up from Seth, decides to play that instead of Shieldred, and pretty smart as Disdainful nice. Stroke Can't is the only counter spell in the list, so Seth knows that as well. Yeah. yeah. All righty. So known information for Luis Scott Vargas of the Shieldred in hand. Has two copies of Fable, Sokinzan, Nahiri's Warcrafting, and that Invasion. So he's just got the world at his fingertips right now. Yep, and here's Invasion, Sess only cards, Shieldred, so having to discard that one. Mm. Pretty unfortunate, but yep. to either discard that or... Uh... Okay, so there is the mill. Trespasser, Shieldred, Mountain. Okay, here oh we go. Is it Atali time? I think it's Atali time. All right. <clears throat> Prepare <sighs> your butts for a big <laughs> dumb dinosaur, friends. Because Atali, Primal Conqueror, is hungry. Unreal. This deck looks <laughs> so sweet. Being able to have eight ways oh, to bring this back. What? You like Fables, Ailey? Uh, I mean, I like stories. Stories are good. Yeah. You know, heading back to Eldraine, some good stories to the tell there, I'm sure. The mirror has been broken Oy. here. It's going to be a big draw step for <laughs> Seth. Do we have cruelty? Da -da. Oh, he didn't see. He's keeping it so good. Invoke despair. Invoke? Okay. Here's All right, the question. It's a start. Does, can, he, can he cost it even? Uh, he can, but he can also just discard this and try to hit Cruelty. Yeah. Chapter 2 is on the stack Oof. here for Fable, so it's a question. Is Cruelty even good? I, yeah. I mean, I, I think this is much of a muchness here, and Seth is going to have a big think about this. He is able to cost the Invoke Despair. Yeah. He can get rid of a creature and an enchantment. There's no Planeswalker, so he would get a card off of that. Yeah, so draw one card, you lose a Shaman and a Fable. Is that even good? Like, I don't think it is. I think Seth is really priced into just discarding this and hoping to hit Cruelty. Um, I think we've... Yeah, I, I think he kept it. Yeah, I think we're into first main. But it's, yeah, I mean, he's shaking his head right now. He's like, is this even good? We'll find out. We'll see what's on top. If it was a cruelty, Seth is definitely going to kick himself a little bit. Yep, creature enchantments. <laughs> Same <laughs> sleeves. <laughs> well, pickles. <laughs> Which one is mine? I'm not too sure. Good luck figuring that one out, gentlemen. All right, it wasn't Ooh, a braid. Okay, right. So that was definitely better to cast the invoke with, you know, hindsight in mind. Mm -hmm. It's, at least it's something to do still, so. 
This is your son. Okay. <laughs> Double checking exactly <laughs> which sleeve is which. I mean, if they're using the same sleeves, then it's fine, but you know, each. Uh... <laughs> they do look pretty close. Each sleeve manufacturer is uh, a little different in that regard, so. There you go. Just want to make sure everything stays in the up and up, though, and this Lazatev convert is not the easiest thing to deal with. As a 4-4, you know, because a braid is nice, can't kill it, though. Yep, exactly. And we see a couple more fables there from Luis. Luis could have the classic <laughs> four-fable draw here, thanks to Atali. Jeez, yeah. Unbelievable. We're, are we going to set a record this weekend, most fables cost in one game? Or by Pro one person? Probably in uh, one tournament, at well, least. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I bet that's sure. going to be true. We can ask Frank about that. Just yeah. Numbers. Crunch the numbers, absolutely. How many fables got cost this weekend? Let's find out. Here we go, another invasion. Poor Amon Cap, man. They're just getting run over. I did not really realize how powerful this card really is in this mm. deck. This this oh, Grixis no, list looks it's really in the bin again. excellent. Breach, why? Yeah, not the best draw for Seth anyways with <sighs> not being able to cast it, but you know, in, in this mirror match, you know, quote unquote mirror match of reanimator uh -huh. decks going at it, the one that's a little lower to the ground usually is going to be a little bit better, and that is definitely uh, you know, proving to be true here. Here we go. Goodness me. You don't have to exile a tolly <laughs> or anything when you do it, so. Ooh, we. Okay, so this is going for the Atraxa. Yep. I'm gonna refill the hand here. Plenty of options, card types to pick from. So we've got Ottawara, Cruelty, another Invasion, Corpse Appraiser, and a Bankbuster. Discard the hand size, says Luis Scott Vargas. Not what just Seth is looking brag, for, huh? exactly. Yeah. Goodness me, let's just get that little bit of dirt off his shoulder, you know. Exactly. <laughs> wow. And that's going to be GG, Luis Scott Vargas picking up the win here against his teammate Seth Manfield. And that game, you know, it, it, it kind of feels like it could go either way, you know. Definitely could, yeah. Because if you, I mean, it's not possible, but if you whiff with one of those, yeah. Incredibly powerful top end cards. Yeah. Then it flips back to your opponent straight away. So. Exactly. And I mean, if Seth were to draw instead of invoke despair there, draw the cruelty, and then has the ability to bring back a Tali or a Traxa, you know, it's going to be a completely different game there. So yeah, it really could have went any other way. But gotta say that Grixis stack looks awesome. Very cool. We're gonna <laughs> see plenty more of it, I'm sure. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll have more from these standard rounds.
Welcome back to Pro Tour Minneapolis. It is Ailey Loney, that's me, alongside Corey Baumeister, that's you, friend. That's and we are going to be jumping into another excellent matchup here between two superb players, Javier Dominguez, Alexander Hain, fellow countryman. As, there we go. And former world champion in Javier Dominguez. So both of these players are exceptional. Grixis midrange versus Rakdos midrange. Javier Dominguez yep. joining Team Sewer Rats recently. And Alex Hain, along with Alan Wu, on the Wu Hain clan. That is wow. their team name. <laughs> that yes. is really good. I like it a lot. Really good. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Yeah, in incredible how many great players are 3-0. and You know, this really skill-intensive limited format definitely produced a lot of great yeah. Magic players uh, for our undefeated players. Excuse me, Team Handshake. Sewer Rats are the other big team here. There we go. They there we all go. get a little confusing. But yeah, we are good to jump in here. We're going to watch this from the top. Check out how these two players do against each other. Game number one here. Again, black and red, baby. Name of the game. Yeah. All right, so these are going to be a lot more grindy games than the mm -hmm. other decks that we saw here, even though it was kind of, you know, Rakdos against Grixis. These are definitely just decks that are trying to win the game with removal spells, a bunch more creatures, and not trying to go way yeah. over the top with the Tallies. But uh, the one thing I really do love that we see here in the Rakdos deck is Chandra Hope's Beacon yeah. and one of Light Up the Night. Mm -hmm. So being able to copy that, pew, just deal oh, a ton no. of damage to the face or invoke copying that with Chandra as well. Going to be some exciting stuff here. As things stand, looking pretty much what you'd expect to see after about a year of seeing the Rakdos deck underway, as uh, we're going to get the Fable the Mirror Breaker and Reckoner Bankbuster down, along with a copy of the Blood Tithe Harvester. So all cards we're very familiar with at this point. No real new additions lately to these decks. You know, a couple Brotherhoods and cards coming in. All right, here we go. We see Fable. Okay. Yeah, fables of plenty. All right, discards a couple of lands there, and has a pretty solid hand. That looks like fable. I believe make disappear. Yeah. A couple more lands, one of which being uh, Atawara. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I was curious to see cut from um, Luis and Seth's deck, Make Disappear. You know, that was kind yeah. of like an auto included with a lot of the Grixis strategies, but not so much in those lists. Yeah, I guess you, uh, the one thing that it makes it pretty awkward in these reanimator strategies is if you hit Make Disappear off a of Tali, yeah. you can't do that. So yeah. I think that is kind of the Nambo that you can't really play yeah. a lot of counter spells with that. Uh, you know, that's, uh, the first time I did that in the reanimator <laughs> strategy, I was like, oh, like, oh that was why. not smart. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. You know, you want to you increase increase the uh, percentage of hits that you get, so. Exactly. Hitting a counter spell is not something you want to be doing. All right, so the Fable the Mirror Breaker mirror here, usually favoring the person who does it first, but not always the case, and you do see Invoke Despair, that is kind of that catch-up mechanism, yeah. where you at least get to deal with one and deal with all the abilities of Fable straight away, yeah. especially with another card in most scenarios. Yeah, it's nice when there's only one Fable to Mirror Break it down, but unfortunately, yes. two of them there. Okay, draws a card here. And there goes Invoke. Ooh, there was an Invoke off the top for Alex. Oh, nice. Alexander, excuse me. Shiv and Reef in hand there, too. And I was talking to Alexander Hain a little bit in between this round mm -hmm. after, after he just locked up a 3-0 and said, you know, Mike Sigrist is one of the best limited players ever, and people were asking him a lot of questions on mm -hmm. the team. And then Hain said, yeah, I got a personal lesson from Sigrist before the draft for like 40 minutes on uh -huh. limited. And he said, since Mike wasn't playing, I absorbed yeah. Mike's power. Okay. So, oh. yeah, so, I mean, got to... Alexander Hain and Mike Sigrist here doing pretty well. Okay, all right. <laughs> Fear the... Uh the Mike Hain or the Alexander Sigrist. I like it. Yeah. Very good. There we go. We just created a new superpower. <laughs> That's the next Monty and Machine graphic oh, oh, we're going to combine okay. there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, two humans together that, yeah. Mm. Corpse Appraiser in hand there, I think. And as well as another Fable the Mirror Breaker. So still some action in hand there for Alex Hain. 
on the side of things. Javier Dominguez has a bankbuster, and they're just hanging out. These bankbusters aren't getting any counters removed. Yep, exactly. Not a ton of a braids in the list here. It looks like just two of them from both players, one main, one side. So, you know, when Bankbuster gets to use all its value, yeah. it's an incredible magic card. But, uh, you know, if it ever gets cut short, <laughs> not as good. Hey, that's a card in limited, Corey. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's not being played in these decks, though. <laughs> All right, so we have our Reflection of Kiki Jiki flipped, and there is a Corpse Appraiser cut down, going to get rid of our newly flipped friend. So back in the sleeve and into the yard he goes. And able to get some value yes. out of this. This is definitely where the Grixis deck shines, yeah. is where you're able to start valuing your opponent. But the thing where Rakdos really shines is these transmogrants, if you take advantage of a greedy mana base yeah, from Grixis, sure. as well as just being a more aggressive, fast shell. So if the games go longer, it definitely favors Grixis midrange a lot more than Rakdos. Yeah, Rakdos always feels like it's the, the you know, clean and lean, get in, get your stuff and get out kind of deck, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Whereas uh, the Grixis shell... It's okay to dirtle around a little bit. Go digging over here. Go find something there. You know, they don't shop very effectively. Yes, is, is exactly. <laughs> and if you can ever get Reflection to target Corpse Appraiser uh -huh. and get that to resolve, oh, that ends up being oh, so strong. So gross, yeah. ETB effects with the Reflection are nasty. Absolutely. All righty. So I do see the one of light up the night here in Javier's mm -hmm. hand. So if you can get Alexander Hain a little low, that's going to be really powerful, but not looking so solid now as it is nah. just a really expensive removal spell. So not really what you're looking for in the early part of the game when you don't have Chandra. Yeah, definitely want to see Hope's Beacon arrive. Oh, hello. Don't want to see the apocalypse so much, but there's a shield and that light up the night might be finding a new target quite soon. Yeah. All right, going to the draw step, lose two. Doesn't seem like Hain has a removal spell for it quite yet, but still a very strong hand. We saw Fable, we saw Serpent in hand, as well as an Invoke Despair. Uh, another really cool over-the-top element yeah. in this Grixis deck, Blade Coil Serpent being able to just, you know, use all the modes effectively. Yeah. Yeah. Open that card and limit it, and you're just like, oh, that's a lot of words. Okay, <laughs> uh, sure, sure, sure. Let's uh, do this. But it's cool, because it fits in wh whichever deck you want to make it. So we're going to see it here. And uh, we're going to pay lots and lots and lots of mana for it. Okay, let's see what we are all paying. It could be yeah. just all black mana, discard three so cards geez, here. Yeah, that would be crazy. So it's 1418, right? Yeah, in response, I'm going to draw a card three into life. Yeah, the hasty side of things, not great. You know, card draw excellent when you need to refill the hand, but yeah. the discard is what hurts your opponent the most. Yep, and it does look like the discard is what we're choosing. Now, Javier did have the ability to draw a card, so it gets to keep one card, and it is the Light Up the Night. But yeah, Shield are just going unanswered here. This is going to be a problem mm -hmm. for Hain. Like, it, it is very tough to win these mid-range battles if Shield goes unchecked. Yeah. Shieldred, like you mentioned, you know, getting Hain down to a, uh, a light up the night range. It may well be how this game ends up eventually, but let's see how Hain deals with this. But first things first, Reckoner Bankbuster is going to remove that final counter, get the pilot, and the treasure. Really getting full value of that Bankbuster mm -hmm. here. Gotta love that. All right, Blade Coil Serpent, Corpse Appraiser, Bank Buster on the other side of things. And over here, a Bank Buster that has just taken off its third counter. A Shieldred the Apocalypse running the show at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Can't really get into combat here because you don't want to trade it away. Mm -hmm. um, even if you were to animate rank... Uh, Reckoner, Bankbuster, and Corpse Appraiser and put both of them in front of Shieldred, that's yeah. a trade Hain would probably be happy with. So yeah. I imagine that Shieldred is not going to attack, not going to block, and just oh, uh, really... Yeah. She's just an enchantment. Don't worry about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> blood Tithe Harvester, another Blood Token. So got two going there now. And uh, I love that the Blade Quill Serpent lines up so nicely for the Blood Tithe Harvester next turn. If he uh, uses that activated ability yeah. on 
the serpent, then uh, that's that big creature out the way. Yeah, well, there is only two bloods here, only one treasure, so it is only negative four. Yeah, it's a Oh, yeah, yeah, four. it is a four, four. I don't know why yeah. I thought it was a six, six for a second. You just, you just upgraded it, yeah. That, yeah, <laughs> need to make that card even more say, powerful. say, it's a mythic. What's, what's beyond that? Exactly. The secret layer version or something, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it gets a shield or a down as well to gain parity oh, okay. with this. Sure, yeah, all right. That'll uh, that'll keep things even Stevens yep. here. And for the most part, it will just be these shield rids will bounce off each other. There'll yeah. be no loss of life, no gaining life. Does get a little Convoluted, dicey yeah. <laughs> if uh, one of the players is at two or something, that oh, active, yeah. non-active player comes into play. I oh, remember Meat Hook Massacre with, like, cat oven combo and trying to figure out life gain and drain when two of them are on the board. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I, uh, I prefer to not. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a reason the card was banned. <laughs> <laughs> Too powerful. All, All right. right. Ooh, we're, ooh, we're lighting up knights. Let's kill thing. Okay, so more than likely coming at <laughs> Shieldred. Yeah, I would want to kill that. Yeah. Javier sitting at 24, so pretty healthy. Yep. We're going to draw a card in response to the cost. Any counter spells? Nope. Not now, unfortunately. So there goes Shieldred, but not the only one in the deck. Okay, Shieldred down. Still a great hand for Hain, though. I see Fable, Corpse Appraiser, okay. and Invoke Despair. So plenty of stuff still going on. And there you said, the Harvester taking down Serpent. And now you can definitely get uh, some creatures into the red zone here. Oh, yeah. No Death Touch on the other side. We can crew with the pilot. Because, you know, pilots have their licenses, so they, they get to crew big things. Checks out to me. Checks out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, just a chump block here. Just recognizing Hain is in some trouble. It has to preserve life total. Yeah. At eight currently, and a second bank buster down on the board. Doesn't have any mana available to draw a card right now. And now it would be really great if Hain could find something like a cut down yeah. to be able to kill the pilot and then deal with Shieldred. So can right. still do that if you Corpse Appraiser and find a one mana removal spell. Ooh, that's cruelty. Oh, wow. Cruelty and Shieldred. Yeah, putting a Shieldred <laughs> into the graveyard has to be terrifying here for yeah, it's Javier. Like, what did you get? What did you get <laughs> if you put that there? Oh, boy. So with a read ahead ability, it's always three choices you can make with that card. What do you think we'll see if he goes for it now? Not going to be at the moment, but uh, going to get rid of that Shieldred, so that's off the board. Yeah, was it a cruelty or was it just the go for the throat there? Ah. It kind of looked oh, like yeah, it, no. right? It did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he's not playing any of that card. Gix says, come on. Sorry, my bad. There we go. There we go. Cruelty of Gix. That's oh. the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Both powerful, that's for Very sure. Very good, yes. All right. And Graveyard Trespasser and a land here for Javier, so... Nothing fantastic. Yep, just digging. Wow, this game really is shifting quickly when Shieldred goes down. Yeah, yeah, Shieldred can get games done and dusted so, so quickly here, but Javier still has to deal the last six points of damage, and the board is, you know, quite effectively gunged up here for Alexander Hain for the time being. Exactly, and crewing this pilot and attacking with the Bank Buster is fine, but Alexander Hain has a couple options. Can either animate a Bank Buster, which is okay, or just double block with Corpse Appraiser and Shaman and trade up, as we like to say, um, and just have the Bank Buster trade for a Corpse Appraiser. Great yeah. Trespasser yeah. grabbing the Serpent, so gain and drain effect in full effect at this point. Five. Life is what Alexander Hain is at. Okay, so chapter two, deciding if you want to keep that freshly drawn Make Disappear, and then has the Invoke Despair. Make Disappear kind of not as great now. Yeah, no. But, I mean, some of the big spells you can still counter with the help of Casualty. We'll see how Hain values that. Yeah, big thing here for Hain yeah, with the trigger on the stack. <laughs> looks like he kept it. Nice. Invoke Despair. Going to get cost here, so we'll see a crew in response. And the poor little pilot goes down with the ship. 
And yeah, take four, draw two extra cards, and Hain is definitely pulling back into this. Yeah, he's hanging on here by the skin of his teeth. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, I bet uh, Javier's really hoping to find a Chandra to replay that light of the night. Yeah, or um, just to deal five to Alexander Haynes' face. That might not be bad as yeah, well. Yeah, that's also good. <laughs> yeah, the you could do the you could do the fancy way, but you know you can just minus Chandra. I prefer that. Things. Yeah, yes. that's that's more fun. <laughs> but yeah, these Rakdos uh, mid-range players that were playing Chandra and light up the night. Mm -hmm. They actually labeled their deck Rakdos Burn. That's <laughs> how that's how much they feel that that's how games end a lot yeah. of the time. So that's like who needs to attack. <laughs> just deplete life total in another fashion. Exactly. All righty, so let's take a look here. What's going on? Yeah, but that's a nice reason to keep that make disappear from Hain is right now, Javier had to get rid of the treasure, so you don't even have to. Okay, yeah, Brotherhood's End. Okay. I'm getting rid of all the artifacts, Artifacts, it, it looks like, yeah. yeah. Either three damage dealt to each creature in Planeswalker or Destroy all but artifacts. the shields are down now, so if you can find Chandra, it is game. Yep. Oh, Duress. Duress, okay. Sees the make disappear in the bank buster. Easy pick there. Okay. For Javier Dominguez. Javier probably would have just slammed Chandra here, so I'm assuming it is not there. I think he just picked up a land there or the Duress off the top. Yeah. I mean, he could just pass and flip it tonight. Oh, he's already played a spell, yeah. so that wouldn't work. Yeah, doesn't really have any great Just attacks. Turn that, back, was, yeah. that was the turn you needed, Chandra, that's for sure. Yeah. It's another creature now on the board here for Hain. I'm kind of I'm kind of interested that oh, okay. uh, Javier spacer. didn't take the make disappear. You know, like it, at this point, you kind of got to look as your only out okay. is to kind of burn them out. Yeah. Where make disappear is just straight away going to counter that spell. Looks like cut down was the other card dealing with the reflection. Yeah, that loop that you mentioned with the Corpse Appraiser is something that you don't want to get into. You yeah. don't want to see that. Like, there's a lot in the bin, so Corpse Appraiser would definitely get digging through the top of the library there. Yeah, huge powerhouse there. All right, Javier top decking Fabled Mirror Breaker. It's helpful. But at some point, what do, when does Hain decide to start turning the corner here and start getting some damage through? <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit precarious situation right now, you know, just kind of hanging out with his ever-growing army, going quite wide at this point. Yep, that was an invoke despair off the top for Hayne. Mm -hmm. oh and now if, if Hayne were to attack with the Goblin Shaman, you get the tra <laughs> just, <laughs> just like, yeah, <laughs> what is that, the fourth one? Oh, goodness me. That's what you want to see, though, you know? fourth, yep. You are a burn deck, I guess. <laughs> yep. Four invoked despairs in the deck. Okay, but once it's again, crazy. if this Shaman doesn't get in there, Javier is live for Chandra off the top. Yeah. All right, big draw step. Let's see, what do you get? Oh, no. Flip it to flop, it's nighttime. Oh, the wolves are out. Okay, that does deal two damage if you can chew on two creatures. Yeah. Drains two life, I should say. Not quite enough. And now I believe there is two make disappears in hand. So as long as Hayne doesn't tap out, <laughs> and I've kind of been saying that for a while, but then he proceeds yeah. to keep tapping out, um, you know, it should be game one going to Hayne. Yeah. I mean, he just hung in there and just strung together a series of spells that got him back into this. That bank buster in conjunction with the corpse appraiser. <laughs> like, he just didn't have anything. He was always doing something, and that is going to be enough there for Javier Dominguez to say, you know what, I got you to five, but that wasn't good enough. Yeah, I think that was all four Jeez. Invoke Despairs to uh, take down Javier there. Pretty impressive. <laughs> you could just tell by the hands. Yeah, we don't get to see facial expressions in these matches, unfortunately. Yeah. But, you know, just the, uh, the hand. I think, <laughs> the I think the think international we... symbol for, <laughs> yeah. sure, fine, I guess you got that. <laughs> I think we could kind of figure what their facial expressions were by that, that's for sure. Or at least the general mood. <laughs> I see your bank buster and raise you mine. All right, bank buster into fable. into fable, pretty strong. These guys are playing like their house is on fire. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, and I mean, the one thing, the players don't want to pick up any draws in this standard format, especially these mm -hmm. two grindy decks. The yeah, games can go long, yeah, so, they can. you know, that is something that all these players have to be conscious of, especially the players that are playing Mono White Midrange. Yeah, you we know. saw in so many RCs those yes. games going to draws. The Canadian one ended so late at night, like, I passed out on the couch. I was trying to watch the rest of it. Yeah, I think there were 52 <laughs> draws after Jeez. day one of the, of the DreamHack RC. So, yeah, that is definitely something that players have to be ready for and when you get to world every or I mean when you get to a pro tour everything kind of slows down a yeah. bit so uh, that gets even amplified a little bit more so permanence of plenty on this battlefield now as we have shamans we've got bank busters we've got the fables going all rack those things yeah and now I do see from Javier with the fast shuffle there there's two more lands oh. and then the Chandra hey Chandra she's here all right oh, are we gonna see some shenanigans Phenomenal new Planeswalker, oh, thanks so to good. Mother of, or, uh, March of the Machines. <laughs> Mother of the Machines. <laughs> I know. Mom of Machines. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, goody. I'm so excited to see she's Chandra down. I want to copy some spells. And there is Invoke Despair. Oh, man. Critter is gone. So that is gone, but there is a treasure. So no matter what, Javier can play Chandra next turn. But Chandra isn't super safe on this battlefield. No. Like, if you deal two damage to a Shaman and Alexander Haynes face, then all of a sudden the Chandra is still at a loyalty um, that is vulnerable Three? to just a Corpse Appraiser, crew up, Bankbuster, attack it. Yeah. So it's not really the card you want to play yeah. in the face of Bankbuster, which is, you know, something we saw true of, like, Liliana the Veil, mm -hmm. any of the Planeswalkers. Bankbuster is kind of the answer to them. Yeah. Just, you know, sitting there on the bench waiting to... Uh, to hang out, but I don't think we found, um, no. oh, did we have a land in hand there? Oh yeah, he played his fifth land. Yep, so played the fifth land, has the treasure. Has the treasure. Sure, sure. But now at least Javier still has a nice turn. Play Harvester, hold back the Bank Busters if you do want to block the Goblin Shaman from Hain, mm. and then activate both Bank Busters, get a couple cards, perfectly, a perfect strategy to this kind of mid part of the game. Also has the Takanuma in hand to get back a creature or planeswalker. Yep. If it's not chewed on by a you know a wolf or a <laughs> corpse appraiser yeah. in the meantime. <laughs> All right. Turn pass back here to have your Dominguez. The best words in magic. Draw a card. Uh-huh. I'm a fan. Alright, what we got? Is it Chandra time? Let's duress, clear the way first. I like it. So I believe I did see a negate there. Yep, so negate being uh, played here from hand just to absorb some information. Even okay. if there's not another spell, just make sure uh, you don't know everything here. Nice. And the activation of the Harvester, getting rid of the reflection of Kikijiki. And now Javier has a, a pretty nice sequence uh, that he can do, even if he doesn't really play anything else that's still holding back the Shaman, you can activate the Reckoner Bank Buster with one counter on it, get that pilot, yeah. animate the other one, that's block, and then draw. Yep, that's very, very neat. I love these mid-range battles, <laughs> Ailey, I'm not going to lie. I'm a fan. Always something happening as we see Corpse Appraiser hit the board once again, exiling the Blood Tithe Harvester. What can we find? All right, I think that was a Serpent. Okay. So another Haymaker from Hain's deck. So far, it, it, it just looks... Hain really valued counter spells mm. and huge spells with playing four Invoke Despairs, <laughs> a couple Blade Serpents, uh, Blade Coil Serpents, and even some Gix Commands. So really trying to go over other decks, but not going way over like we saw from Seth and yeah. Luis. Uh, a little bit earlier. Yeah, it's just like cranking up the intensity, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's going up to like 11, not to 22. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's that? Ottawa in hand there too for Hain? Okay. Hey, Shieldred, what's up? There's no, a make disappear. Yeah, there is a make disappear. There is two mana open, so would have to sacrifice a thing to ensure that it stays super countered. Yeah, it looks like that's probably going to be okay. Goodbye, little shaman buddy. And goodbye, Shieldred, more importantly. Yeah, and I believe Javier didn't play a land drop yet, so could have actually prevented 
this make disappear, but I think it was trying to play Blackleaf Cliffs um, as a tap land to be more mana efficient, okay. but was able to prevent that if he played one of the untap lands. Then you have to play Takanuma. It looks yeah, like that was the I think other hanging one. On, so. I think hanging on to Takanuma is probably a little more valuable right now. Because if it does so get too, countered, yeah. then cool. Something out of your hand, something off your board, because you had to casualty it, and then I can get that back later when I need it. Yep, totally agree with you. No legends on the board right now, though, to get the discount for Takanuma. Another a bank buster coming down here. Yeah. This card is really incredible. It Just is. It's so good. It's like Maze Mind Tome, you know, that can smack you. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. When the Tome fights back. Yeah, yeah. yeah I get beaten with books. Yeah. <laughs> Eight mana, draw three cards, get a treasure, get a 1-1 one, one pilot yeah. that can crew the vehicle, and then you have that sticking around. Yeah. Really, really. Yeah. It makes and, and, combat and really tough as well. It does, and yeah. it's so good, at, too, against, you know, decks that play Invoke Despair, because you all of a sudden have this little throwaway 1-1. One, one yes. That you can just be like, okay, cool, fine, whatever, you know. You don't get a card. I don't take two dings. Totally agree. Okay, it looks like a double crew. An attack for a ton of damage. Yes. 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 That resolves, says Javier. And we do still see that Chandra in hand. So, mm -hmm. you know, similar to the last game, trying to get Alexander Hain within the quote unquote burn range yeah. and finish the deck off. Or yeah. uh, finish uh, Hain off with a burn style deck here in this mid range battle. Yeah, you know, Hain's going to have that on the back of his mind too. He's like, okay, I need to preserve yeah. my life total. So, in, in other instances where you might be okay to take the damage against this deck, you can't. Here she comes. All right, and I don't think I see an answer to that yet. Well, it looks like it's resolving. Now, where are we going to go with this? Up or down? Let's see if we have any. Oh, how much mana do we have? Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> we got to see it! <laughs> Just, yeah. <laughs> In production's like, I've seen enough. Get out of here. Let's go. Game three. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can... Invoke Despair, Chandra. I can see why they call it Rakdos Burn. That was <laughs> quite the finish there. <laughs> wow. Good grief. All righty, let's go. Game number three. <laughs> Hain <laughs> Dominguez. That's why you play Chandra, friends. And there is a huge, huge hit for Hain there. Wow. Duress just missed. You get to peek yeah. for one mana. Oh, man. Do you think you, you, you just like look, you, you look at the hand and you're like, I'm going to keep this. Because if they play in Duress, they get to <laughs> nothing. Nothing gets taken. But, I mean, the, on the flip side of that, this uh, Corpse Appraiser hand it's from Hain is not very good. They're just vanilla 3-3s. Three and you probably got to play one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so 3-3 three, three gonna sit there and uh, get smacked by a bank buster if there's a 3-drop to follow up. But there's not a creature, per se. It is the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. At least not a creature that has its bank buster license. Yes, yes. That is a much better 3-drop in this scenario, oh, for yeah. sure. And most scenarios, for what it's worth. Yeah. So is it gonna be a tale of the three powered creatures here? Will Hain be able to kill Dominguez with <laughs> the, 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 the pretty simplistic hand he's got going right now, all things considered. So it looks like there was another duress that Javier drew. <laughs> More than likely, that's something you're probably going to um, pitch. Yeah. Although now Hain does have the counter spell. Uh huh. Yeah, it looks like counter spell, two lands, and corpse appraiser for Hain in hand. So not looking great. And there <laughs> is another duress. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Take a peek, perhaps, or and we'll see a counter. Yeah, we'll see yeah. if uh, Hain fires this off just to see if Javier He'll will pay. pay. Two, yeah. I mean, this is this is kind of like a gotcha moment, isn't yeah. it? It's like it's, it's not really anything too interesting in hand there for Hain. Yeah, you does Javier think, buy the bluff? Yeah, you got to think that's kind of bait. Just yeah. yeah you have <laughs> What's the that one meme card. from Mad Max? That's bait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Javier Dominguez is such a world-class player. Absolutely incredible. The stuff that he's been able to pull off over the years. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Winning a pro tour with miracles <laughs> back in the day. That was an incredible pro tour to watch. Here we go. Corpse appraiser swinging in now. It's just like, you know what? I am not going to hang around here and wait for you to kill me, so I'm going to start swinging in. Down by three to 17. 
What's happening here in the second main phase? Looks like we're going to Corpse Breezer again. Again, just another vanilla. Vanilla 3-3 here, not what you want. You want to be playing Fable the Mirror Breaker as your first one and have those follow-up, of course, for mm -hmm. Fraser a little bit later. But do what you got to do here. Reflection of Kiki Jiki flipped. Let's see what the follow-up is for Javier. Definitely advantage Javier as long as he has any gas in the tank here. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of seems to be what happened in game number one. He just ran out of gas, had the hands yep. so close, and then uh, <laughs> just couldn't finish it off there. Yep. Game two had all the gas in the world. Two cards with the Bankbuster being active. See if Hain can pick up some action here. Now, one thing that Hain has going for him compared to uh, Javier is if Hain top decks a powerful five drop, it's going to resolve. Yeah. You know, it is fully going to work. Soul transfer. So that's Exile, exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's mm. just the exile. Not exactly what you want from your soul transfers. You'd rather yeah. have a blood in play. You'd rather have a fable so you can bring back something from your graveyard. Yeah, that would be super nice right now, but unfortunately, resources getting removed from Haynes Battlefield, so just the one option available as we see our little goblin getting some more loot for Javier Dominguez. Okay, and is there one of the big spells well, let's here? See. Two cards. Yeah. Five. It's a lot six. of powerful five and sixes. <laughs> he invoked despair again. Oh boy. Sadness goes on the stack, I would say. <laughs> yeah, and with having three mana available there, Make Disappear was not mm -hmm. an option unless you already gave away the Corpse Appraiser, and there was only a couple negates, so yeah. ran it out there. More cards. Love to see it for Javier Dominguez. All right, and I see Chandra in hand as well, as well as an Abraid and a land, so everything coming up Javier here. Yeah, it's looking like Javier's game here indeed. Just a couple more game actions to take to close us out here up against Alex Hain, who hasn't drawn any answers to what Javier's been up to. Yeah, what a match. Jeez. What a match here from both players. Looks like, you know, Hain just had a little bit of an unfortunate draw. Yeah. You know, it, if you're already mulling to six, mm -hmm. you have a couple of Corpse Appraisers and some lands, definitely got to keep that. Uh, just a little unfortunate, didn't get to compete as much this game. Yeah, down to six now, I believe. Five. Like it, and another treasure, another oh, oh, oh. land off the top. Oh boy, uh, you know you're in trouble when you're cycling triumphs, and that's yeah. going to be the handshake from Alexander Hain. Have your Dominguez picking up the win there, continuing his winning ways, Corey. Yeah, absolutely impressive stuff here. Rakdos looking really good, uh, and we got to see exactly what I wanted to see: yep. the double invoke despair <laughs> off Chandra. That looked so impressive, that was and fun. it's pretty wild that you can just play that if you just have three extra mana lying around, yeah. tick up and cast it. So just lying around, <laughs> Chandra gonna do some stuff, I think. Yeah, she's gonna burn this weekend for sure. So Corey, we got plenty more action to show you from this round. It is Chris Faber up against Shota Yasuoka, one of the best Magic players of all time. Yes. 12 top finishes. Wow. Unbelievable stuff from Shota. So let's jump into the action here and see how this one concludes between these two players. And two top eight competitors from the last Pro Tour. Yeah. Both were dispatched in the top eight. But, you know, I feel like we were all kind of wanting more mm. uh, from Shota because he just dominated yeah, Pro Tour Phyrexia absolutely. and then ran into an absolute train wreck ma uh, matchup, matchup from yeah. Derek Davis. And, <sighs> that was uh, just rough. You know, it's just kind of like, wait, Sh Shoto, stop playing Magic after like round 13 at that Pro Tour. Yeah. And, wait, he's out? What? <laughs> really? He so, went to go and play Arena on his phone afterwards. That's ranting. actually true. Yeah. yeah. Went to play the qualifier. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, okay, cool. Let's just keep going. You know, when you're winning, you're winning. And here comes Denik. Pius I'm, Apprentice. I'm such and a Shota Denik fan. dies straight away to a cut down. Man. Oh, yeah, Shota's fantastic. And Shota playing a deck that I wouldn't necessarily expect um, with Esper Legends here. Yeah. A lot of players kind of, you know, it fell out of favor with them. So. Yeah, yeah. Not exactly the most popular deck 
um, by, by these players by a large margin here. I believe it was the fourth most popular deck. And it doesn't play Fable of Mirror Breaker, mm -hmm. which, uh, yeah, it's an incredible card. Well, I am so looking forward to seeing how these two archetypes do this weekend. Esper Legends, you know, a lot of people kind of went off it because of the new red spells, you know, that hate out yeah. on blue and black. And then also Domain Control, which is, you know, a resurgent list. Or should I say, a list that has grown in popularity. Yes, absolutely. The mana base is rough, but you know, the lands are there to do it. So if you can get a domain controlled list going, then uh, by all means, have fun. Yeah, Ooh, it looks Rona. like we're missing some land drops here a from little Chris. Bit, yeah. And yeah, it doesn't really look like a domain deck right now. I was like, are we sure we got that yeah. right? But yeah, it is a Sulphur Springs and Swamp. Definitely in the mana base here, but you really need something else here to be able to get this going. So. Huge advantage to Shota so far. Maybe he just changed his mind midway and wanted to play Rakdos, you know. Yeah, I don't think he can do that anyway. No, you don't. <laughs> sure cannot. Don't do that. But yeah, things looking great here so far for Shota. Has Rafine, the Scheming Seer. Yeah, and Chris Down Ferber and Derek Davis did test together for this tournament. Mm -hmm. They're both playing Domain Control. A little bit different list, but they really, really Over. like it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not looking so strong here when you don't get lands, believe it or not. Yeah. Bunch of Canadians also playing the domain control list. Yep. So different approaches from the different regions. As uh, Rafine Scheming Seer connives his way along with the Razor Lash Transmogrant. You know, filtering through the cards you don't need, getting Denik back from the graveyard now is Shota. Yeah, and one of the main reasons that these Esper Legends decks kind of fell out of favor is, well, there was already an incredibly powerful card, one mana removal spell cut down, yeah. but now with Lithomatic uh, Barrage, mm -hmm. it's just more cut downs in the deck, but it also escapes the ward with yeah. Rafine. So a lot of players got, you know, really afraid to play Esper Legends. I guess unless you are a legend, <laughs> then you can play it. <laughs> Yeah, Lithomantic, Lithomantic Barrage, excuse me. Can't be countered, so Ward doesn't do diddly exactly. squat to it. An excellent way to answer these threats. And here we see a nice little interaction here, the flip side of Denik being able to get a clue every mm -hmm. time you even discard a creature card, not just having a creature card die. So yep. anytime a creature value. goes to the bin, you get a token. Yep, and the really the only new addition that these Esper Legend decks got was Rona. Yeah. But Rona's great. Rona's excellent. Excellent in this deck. Being like, able to really filter away all the redundant yeah. legends that you draw. But then you look at her flip side, and you're just like, oh, oh, yeah, Rona's been lifting. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, 5-5. Five, five. Just a casual 5-5 five, five that gets you free stuff. Sure, I'll take some of that. Getting swole. <laughs> yeah, very. Oh, boy. It's hard carrying the apocalypse on your shoulders, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That should be the flavor text for sure. <laughs> for sure. We need to get you in writing those. Yeah, sure. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That is going to be it. Unfortunately, Chris Faber just could not get started there. Shota Yasaoka cleaning yep. up there in a 2-1 against Chris Faber. But, yep. you know, so far we're seeing the variety that is here this weekend. Even though there's a bunch of black and red stuff, there are still some golden nuggets hiding out in the dirt there waiting to take down the big bads of the weekend, Corey. Yep, absolutely. A little unfortunate we didn't really see a game from that uh, Domir d or domain, domain control, deck. Yeah. But, uh, you know, probably kept a hand with Fable on the draw and two lands, didn't get there, you know, and, and really nothing you can do. Nothing you can do about it, but we will see domain control much more today. And, uh... Not right now, though, but we will see Selesnya Toxic, another yes. one of our fun of, I won't say one ofs, but, you know, there's not that many people playing it. I think Max may be the only one on it this weekend. I think you're right. Yeah. Rakdos mid-range, there's plenty of that. So Simon yeah. Nielsen, oh my gosh, he had the most ridiculous end to his to his uh, limited matchups. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Go follow. Sleep. <laughs> what? Mr. Checklist card? No. Uh, Mr. Checklist. Yes. Yep. Yep. Go, go follow him on Twitter and go see how his game ended. It's too long to explain right now because we're in game three here between Sam Nielsen and Max McVitie. I will say it was Zada with the put four counters on something. Stone the seed core. Exactly. And uh -huh. had a bunch of creatures. So believe it or not, uh, oh, some counters were a plenty. There's much more to it than that. But it's all good <laughs> as we're starting off here with Crawling Chorus. No, this is not a limited match, but there is a Skrulls Hive in hand there. That's uh, getting got with the duress yep. from Simon Nielsen. And Max McVitie qualifying for this event with Celestia Toxic a couple weeks ago at DreamHack yep. um, in the U.S. for the RC. Uh, took third, so it was a little 
you know, a little sad about not making it one more match to get to Worlds, mm -hmm. but said his his wedding is on Worlds Day, <laughs> so would have had to make a tough choice. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> honey, Yeah, there's could one we? correct choice yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's rough. But we are underway here. We got uh, our poisonous little toxic friends making their stand here on the battlefield. This is a sped up or a time walked match, so it may look a little funny. That's because we're trying to get through as much magic we can to show you all of the decks as best we can. Yeah, absolutely. Getting to see all four feature matches here. Mm -hmm. It's just excellent. Oh, All yeah. four feature matches of the players that are doing really well, these 3-0 drafters. Uh, one thing, you know, that's a little unfortunate, of course, we all love to be back for Paper Magic. Mm -hmm. The only disadvantage is we don't get to see Simon's dancing with yeah. uh, whatever music he's listening yeah. to. I actually asked him yesterday at registration. I was like, so what are you jamming out to today? He's like, yeah, I wanted to go and find a room in the hotel and just set up like a ballroom so everyone could come and dance. And I was like, that sounds amazing. And I hope you succeed. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> You could dance with him, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, an attack coming in here, which looks yeah, contaminator like with the cr crawling chorus. Yeah, an interesting attack here. Just trying to, uh, I mean, you you do have Tyvar stand. Uh, I talked to Max quite a bit about this. Yeah. So there's Tyvar stand. There's other pump spells, mm -hmm. um, or you just don't have anything and just trying to kind of bluff this attack. Yeah, I mean, it's always. It's good to use up your opponent's thinks. You know? Yes. Make them think about it. Don't just give them the obvious answers. Like, oh, yeah, I got nothing. I'm just going to swing yeah. in and you can kill whatever, you know? And the one uh, the one nice thing from that attack there is if there was a double block a double block on the bloated contaminator, the 1-1 one -one would get through and get to at least two poison. But now we are um, up to being corrupted. So turns yeah. on the land to be able to pump this 1-1 one -one up to a 3-2. Yeah, corrupted mechanic. Super neat indeed. Just, uh, just opens up a whole new, different way of thinking about the game because now it's like yep. things you didn't have to worry about. All of a sudden, taps open. You do now. There go the floodgates. And uh, we'll see the Ooh. Blood Tithe Harvester activate and take care of our fun bloated contaminator friend. All right, minus two, minus two. A nice cyborg card that I haven't seen a ton of. You know, I, I have not seen that card really played a lot, but a new addition here to make sure you have a good answer for aggressive decks. Yes, yeah. I believe that is what it's called. Yeah. yeah so that's going to clear the board out, keep the 2-2 uh, two -two buddy behind. Yep, cut down, teaming up with that card. A really nice play there from Simon, being able to turn it into a 2-2 two -two mm -hmm. and then cut it down. <laughs> One way to deal with bloated <laughs> contaminators. That's a super cool interaction indeed. As we're going to see... An invasion hit the board. Take a look at the hand and uh, get rid of the Glistening Deluge. It's an invasion of Gobokan. When that flips, it gives your, or it could give your uh, creatures indestructible. Yep. So it's just a nice little uh, insurance policy if you do have a board that you want to protect. Yeah, and pumps the team, you know, mm -hmm. the creatures that attack. So it really is a nice way of going super wide yeah. on a battlefield. But you need creatures first. Yeah. So this is looking quite bad well, from Simon. On the wrong side of the board, but or yeah. Or from Max, excuse me. Alrighty, ooh, Besaiju who endures says, get out of here. Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Yeah, and I believe this is pretty much the exact same list that we saw from Javier. Mm -hmm. You do see the one of uh, burn spells here light up the stage, <laughs> or light up the night, excuse me. Yeah. Such cool art, I love it. <laughs> it is really awesome. All right. All right. Let's see where we go from here. So we do have the one attacker Cycling a blood token. Now you are still able to cast that spell underneath the invasion. It just gives it a tax, yeah. similar to Elite Spellbinder yep. that we have seen before. Let's just tax it by two more, but you know, you need the lands to be able to do that. So, exactly. You know, potential there to get the treasure off of the goblin to be able to cast that, but you don't need to do it right now. So it's just hanging out. And this is one of the better matchups here just for the Goblin Shaman. Mm. Most of the time, these uh, toxic decks just don't block well. So no. Well, they can't block. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for the most part, these little guys cannot do none of that. So so here is the land being able to team up with a 1-1 one -one to get the flip side of mm -hmm. the invasion. Put another counter on, and here's Murex just doing an extremely good job up against a deck that's just trying to kill your creatures with spot removal. Yep. 
Mirex is just bitter blossom at home, basically, in these decks. <laughs> kind of like a Danto Vango, a, a, Dung, a Danto's landing. Oh, uh, Legion, oh. yeah, Le Legion's, Legion's landing landings. into a Danto's fort or something. I don't know, but yeah, the the land that used to flip and make you little creatures too. Yeah, that was an incredible magic card oh, for Ixalan. sure. I hope we get something like that when we go back to Ixalan <laughs> this year. I I don't know. Atali already broke out of Ixalan yeah. into <laughs> our meta game. I yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that one's already wreaking havoc on our standard <laughs> meta game. You're not complaining. You've been costing that left, right, and center. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can't tell him I'm I'm being the bad guy here. Yeah, <laughs> I have been casting a oh, lot of that. Oh, is this your is this your uh, what's it, your villain arc, Corey? I think is so. Is that what we're seeing? I oh, think no. so. Oh no, <laughs> Yorion, no, Itali. <laughs> now Itali, oh, what's next? <laughs> oh, Shieldred, you are such a pain in the face. Yeah, and here was Two one points thing. of life. <laughs> we, did, we did a deck tech with Max on this deck, and this was one of the main things he said is, like, Shieldred is a very, very powerful card, mm -hmm. but with a bunch of Tyvar stands in your deck, you're just able to attack into Shieldred yeah. to be able to deal with it. So that's what Simon's thinking about, and that's definitely what Max is representing. Yeah. Certainly a way to uh, get that off the board with the old combat trick Tyvar stand. And these creatures aren't going to be doing any blocking, so certainly. Yep, went with the no blocks. Too afraid of Tyvar stand. Just going to shove with a cute little 3-2. So we do got that at 5 and 8 life points. Yeah, and you basically have to take light up the night here. Otherwise, Shieldred and the Goblin Shaman represent six damage. The draw step represents eight. Max is going to be at a theoretical two, so he's got to do something here. That's little Skrelv. <laughs> what are you calling little? <laughs> Skrelv. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm here all weekend. If you ever have any more questions, I'll help you out. And here it is. <laughs> this should just be it. I mean, there's a Light ton of night, treasures, ton, right? Yeah, a bunch of treasures, and that's going to be it. Handshake there from Max McVitie. So, unfortunately, Toxic not getting the job done here, but Simon Nielsen, very good one indeed. Yep. We are certainly lighting the night up. Yeah, that Rakdos deck looking really good here in back-to-back -back matchups, uh, winning the game with burn spells. So maybe we have to change that from Rakdos midrange back to Rakdos burn, because it's... Proven to be burning players out. I like it. Burn, baby, burn. <laughs> and we're going to be doing plenty more of that, friends. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be at the desk with Maria.